Okay, so it says operation is used to check if an account holder is registered and active in the system. So how do we check if a, an account holder is registered? Let's go to this URL, copy and then we go, we create new tab. Okay, I'll paste it in here. And it says that we need account holder ID. I said this party number validated according to the party ID type, key sensitive, MSS, MSISDN, mobile number validated according to ITU TE164. So validated with is MSISDN, e email validated to with is email and a party code validated with this. So account holder type, specify the type of the party ID, allowed values. So we need to submit this. Account holder ID, it will be a mobile number. And if we probably click the try, we're going to see what you're supposed to provide. Okay, so account holder value and target environment and okay, and then if you don't have Postman, you can be trying them from here. Okay. So query parameters. Okay. So let's say account holder type, say the party number. So let me just put any number in here just to see if it will go through. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And account holder ID. Okay. This ID is going to be the party number and then the type specify the party ID. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So these are the values for the account holder type. Ah, so this is where we need to put this is where we need to put it. Okay. So first is the type, and then the second is going to be the ID. Because we have said MSISDN, we have to provide a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. Okay, and we need to add authorization, S target environment, quickly add and then um, the subscription key, subscription key. I know this is going to be sandbox and the Subscription key, which is going to be this one. Okay, now what, what else do we have to add? Authorization, we need to save this so that at least uh, we can use, we can inherit from the authorization. So I'll save this in the collection. I'll paste this on here. I'll call this um, check if user is registered and active. Okay, yeah, something like this we do. Put in a collection. Okay, save. And then I'll save it in there. And it is a get request. Let me pause it and see what we're going to get. Status calls. Access denied due to missing subscription key. Make sure you include subscription key. Okay, fine. Let me go to oh uh, why do I keep on pissing this in the params instead of Pissing this in under the header. Oh, come on, man. Can't be doing this all the time. Okay, good. So I'll have to take this one. Okay, so it's gone. Nothing is here. And then we have it in the header. And we'll send it again. And we, we get result true. Okay, so this is what we were supposed to get after making this request it says okay which is true if an account holder is registered and active 
false if the account holder is not active or not found okay so we got true got true so we can save this one now and that will be the end for the collection api the collection product api so in the next lesson that we'll do we'll look at um the disbursement collection we'll look at the collection widget and how to use the remittances we'll look at all the, those ones but at least but at least you have an overview of how to use the api uh, yeah you have an overview of how to use the api now this collection that we have here okay i know you may want to integrate it in your application and you may want it the code to be written in your target environment the question that you're going to ask yourself is so now that you've done everything in postman how am i going to do the same thing if i'm a php developer or i'm a node developer or uh, i am whatever developer you are how are you going to do this if you check their documentation they give you codes in different they give you code samples in different program language so c sharp you are going to write something similar to this java you're going to write something similar to that your javascript going to use ajax objective uh, object c php python and ruby but the question is that the, the thing is now that i'll be sharing the api script with you all you need to do is when you get you just have to import this is the import button okay it will be in a json file i'll attach it to the video when you get just import and then you're going to get my collection as soon as you have the collection all you need to do is for instance check if user is registered and active all you do is you you come here the code you click on the code and then you select the language you want to make this request in so if you are php developer you select this select php come on come on come on uh -huh, php and i say i want to make curl or curl i can select and then i'll get everything in that as simple as that it's the same thing you can just copy to clipboard and paste it in your code and then use it from there if you are a javascript developer you just click on this and then you have maybe you want it in jquery ajax you're going to have this you can just copy and then you paste it in your code and you are going to get it to work same thing you can have node uh you can use native node or you can use a request type then the code is written or generated for you and PHP developers, you are there. Python, Shell, Swift, Shell, Go, C Sharp, C, HTTP, um, Curl, and Go. they're all here. So depending on the platform or the language you are writing this code in, you just select the one, you copy, and then you paste it in your code to integrate it. And then you can modify the parameters to suit yours. For instance, the authorization where you have the bearer and everything. Okay so i'll export this and then put it in the description below let's continue all right so we're done with the sandbox user provisioning and that is, that's what we did now the last thing i would like us to touch about in this tutorial although i have already said that we will look at the other collection but i want you to get you the overview of everything okay so these are the various cases that this mtmo api is applicable for instance the request to pay you use this as a service this service is used for requesting a payment from a customer as payer this can be used by an online web shop to request a payment for a customer the customer is requested to approve the transaction on the customer client and the pre-approval tool is used to set up an auto debit towards a customer that is the partner can request a pre-approval from the customer once the customer has approved then the partner can debit the customer account without authorization from the customer and then the second one is transfer which is used for transferring money from a provided account to a customer and then validate account holder can also be used to do a validation if a customer is active and able to receive funds so the use case will only validate that 
the customer is available and active, it does not validate that a specific amount can be retrieved or can be received. And then the last one is get balance. Okay. This request is used to check the balance on the default account connected to the API user. You can read more on these use cases from um, MTN Momo Developer dot mtn.com slash api documentation slash use cases okay so i'll make that link also available you can read more from here instead of just saying i'll just paste it over here and then go to the page these are the use cases so you can read about them they are a lot they are quite a lot they are quite a lot okay all right this will bring us to the end of the lesson I'll do tutorials on the other three products left and eventually go live with you. That is when you are done testing everything in the sandbox and then you want to go to the production environment. Now, as usual, thank you for your participation in this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it. Kindly like and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. If you have any question, you can leave it in the comments below. Thank you.